The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Life is full of tough decisions and making choices is a challenge. So why not let a children's toy decide for you? Now you could consult the classic Magic 8 Ball, but I'd like to present an option for a more modern audience because I've built one that answers with gifts. Amazing hacks, inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So I have had this idea cooking around in the back of my head for a while now, and let's talk about the plan at a very high level for how this is going to work. So we've got our gifts here, and we need to put them into a ball. When we shake that ball, it will display our gifts. Now this gives us a very clear objective for what we want to accomplish, but this means we need to choose our parts that will accomplish said goal. So we're gonna need some way to store and play those gifts. Now there are a lot of different ways to do this, but let's just keep it simple and go with a good old Raspberry Pi. I'm going to be using the Pi 3 Model A+. Plus. Why not use a Raspberry Pi Zero? It's even more lightweight and low power. This is faster. I like that it boots up quickly and I like full-size ports. We've got plenty of space. I don't need to use Raspberry Pi Zero, so I'll save my Raspberry Pi Zeros for even more compact projects. So this will be our main processor. This can play back our GIFs, but we need some sort of display in which uh, we may view them. So I've also gone ahead and found this 1.3 inch 240 by 240 pixel IPS display. And this is a nice little LCD. And I know it works with the Raspberry Pi. There's some fantastic libraries for it. Straightforward. So we'll need a sensor to detect that shaking action. And you can buy them, but a while back I just made one. You can see it consists of a few pieces of copper soldered on top of a spring with another piece of wire coiled around it such that when you shake it, it acts like a switch, which is totally all we need. We don't need any amount of precision for this build. As long as you shake it and it registers as uh, a closed contact, that is totally going to work. So we've almost got everything figured out. We've got our Raspberry Pi, we've got our screen, we've got our sensor, and now we just need to figure out how we're gonna power everything. Doesn't have to be too complicated. I'm just gonna be using this lithium ion battery and a boost converter because the Raspberry Pi needs five volts. This is at the edge of what this can supply. This is the Power Boost 1000 from Adafruit, but it should be okay. We're not doing anything uh, intensive with the processor. And this will be most of our parts. We'll cover the last little remaining bits uh, as we put this together. But a very simple build and the results will hopefully be worth it. Okay, so here we are in the land of Fusion 360 and this is my model for the enclosure for the Magic Gift Ball. Now, I kept the outer shell red just so that it's not just one homogenous black thing, but it will be painted black ultimately. And it's fairly straightforward. I've kept the design simple, so and also so that there are no screws visible on the outside. I want it to be nice and clean. Um, but let's take a look inside to see how it all comes together. So let me just turn on this section analysis here and I can walk through the pieces. So the overall frame consists of two main parts, um, this upper shell and a lower shell that fit into each other. Now the upper shell is what uh, retains most of the electronics so that when you pull it apart, um, they're all mostly on one piece. Uh, at the front here, we've got the bezel um, around the LCD, which just fits uh, as a friction fit into the upper shell. Uh, I've got the LCD itself, as well as a retaining clip. Now, if you recall, the LCD does have mounting holes on the PCB, but the mounting holes are square to each other. And I've noticed for the most part, a lot of LCDs aren't perfectly aligned on their PCBs. 
So you have to align it to the PC, the LCD itself rather than the mounting holes on the PCB. Now I could have uh, done more around that so there's a bit more slop in the holes and still use those, but I like this better because this is ultimately just gonna have two, uh, two holes and a simple little retaining clip. Straightforward, it'll hold the LCD in place. And this also screws into uh, the inside of the upper shell. And going a little bit lower, we've got the Raspberry Pi here, which uh, has mounting points um, along the side of the upper shell. Fairly easy to understand. We've got the lithium polymer battery, which is held in place by another 3D printed piece, which uh, aligns with the mounting uh, posts for the Raspberry Pi. So the same screws that hold the Raspberry Pi will also hold this piece, which holds the battery. Um, we've got the Power Boost 1000, which will also screw into this battery retaining piece. And then uh, we've got our lower shell, which just has our little logo piece. Now I, uh, let's turn the analysis off, decided to incorporate the power switch uh, as the uh, period in the dot .gif uh, icon. I'm, I'm very proud of myself for that. Please, please clap. Um, so uh, this is how you will turn on the magic GIF ball. So let's go ahead and put that back on. And this is just another friction fit here. Um, I did add a little uh, notch um, and a tab for the piece so that it aligns nicely and doesn't just spin in place. Um, but I'll probably glue this to the frame anyway. So we've just got a cut out for our tactile switch right there. So pretty straightforward. This will be the only piece that actually connects to the upper shell. But as for actually connecting together mechanically, I decided to have these pieces that spring into place. So there are slots in the lower shell that accept um, these springy pieces of plastic. Now the reason this is modeled separately as opposed to being um, part of the model one, it's easier to print. Two, if I print this flat, so if this is lengthwise on my 3D printed bed, um, this will be against the grain. So all the stress as this bends backwards um, will be in the strongest orientation. Whereas if this were printed as part of the piece, it would immediately snap. It's just too weak. Um, but PLA is fairly hardy. So this just has some uh, matching grooves here in the side of the upper uh, shell. And that just snaps into place. Um, but we'll see that in real life here in just a second. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! All right, so I've got the parts laid out and it's time to put everything together. We've got our nice 3D printed shell pieces, the inserts that uh, hold the electronics, and of course, our beautiful electronics themselves. So I'm going to start with the LCD and pop this in here. And this has a retaining bracket. Let's go ahead and screw that in. Okay, so before I close this up, let's plug this in and just test to see that it's working. I've got the script set to run at boot. Terminal isn't mirrored to the display. The display is just an object that's run directly from the Python program. So we won't see any activity unless it's actually ready and wired correctly. Perfect, ah, oh, look at that. All right, we are so close to putting this together and there's one more part I wanna talk about because I didn't mention it earlier, but to actually power it on, I'm using this uh, push button power switch system from Adafruit, which is really nice, which means that when I press the button right here, this will actually uh, power up and connect uh, the battery to the boost converter. 
So that's how this actually turns on. But uh, you can see we've got the parts here and there's nothing left but to connect these together and snap it in and turn it on. Let's test it out. All right, moment of truth, let's turn this thing on. And, pop. All right, screen's on, or the backlight's on. There we go. All right, so this is the splash screen that I've made for it, just a Raspberry Pi logo with uh, some nice question marks there. So let's go ahead and give this a shake. <laughs> All right, um, I suppose I need to ask it a question. Um, should I uh, buy Bitcoin? Oh, all right. Ron Burgundy says I should buy some Bitcoin. Let's um, let's get some more advice from my magic gift ball. Should I eat fried chicken every day? Oh, signs point to yes. Um, fantastic. I you know I love fried chicken. Should I make my own non fungible token? Uh, Batman, you're just that's not the answer I wanted. All right, um, will I find true love next Monday? <sighs> Come on, Garth. All right, so let's uh, keep testing it out. I've loaded uh, 23 different GIFs here. Now the original toy is mostly positive. You get 10 yes answers, five ambiguous answers, and five no answers. Mine is much more ambiguous. I love this Tracy Jordan one, it's so good. But you can of course load whatever answers you want for your own magic gift ball. That's the fun of being able to make your own toys. So one thing, um, shaking during a gift will, GIF will not interrupt it. That could be programmed in, but I like it playing all the way through. I have a few meta gifts where someone's actually, or a magic gift ball, magic gift ball, a magic eight ball is actually responding or you get one of those classic responses. Got some Doctor Who right here. And it's all random selection, so I can't, uh, I can't guarantee any particular, well, I could in uh, software guarantee a particular outcome, but uh, I'm a more fair programmer than that. Gotta go with some Step Brothers. Some more Simpsons. Kanye does not approve of whatever you're doing. Gotta get some indecisive flow right here. So this screen has a fantastic viewing angle. That's one of the nice things about IPS displays. It's really high resolution um, relative for its size. But I am thrilled with how this came out. Now this is a pretty satisfying build. It's rare that I come up with an idea and I'm able to execute it almost exactly how I imagined it. There's not a whole lot that I would change. Um, there are round displays that you can buy nowadays, but I wasn't able to find one that I could run at a high enough refresh rate so that the GIFs ran smoothly. But this display is so crisp, so I'm pretty happy with it. Now, of course, if you wanna make your own Magic Gift Ball, you can always find all the parts, files, code, whatever. Or if you just wanna ask me a question about this, you can find me at the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. Now I need to um, go ponder life's great questions and see what my magic gift ball tells me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.